money ain't a thing except for like always used to make a stack and have to split that shit four ways you're shit. listening to talk radio today are you Set your laptop up and go to this website and see what it really is. That's what I want. Let's choke on the cookie. I'm sorry, no previous slave owners allowed in the hotel. Would you like something to drink? We'll just have what he's having. Name's Ernest. Friends call me E. Earn! Ernest! I have a feeling we're in the same boat, Marshal. You owe a lot. Woman, she follows me everywhere. Won't leave me alone. Can't believe this is actually happening. Two days ago, I had a good life, and now I'm being fucked by some shit that I didn't even do. I'm losing my wife, my house. My Slavery! Daughter fucking do anything. My grandfather used to tell me how his father built everything we had from the ground up, pulled himself up by his own bootstraps, you know? Turns out he didn't. What you Turns think? Turns out he had a lot of help and a lot of kids. <laughs> Maybe it's only right. We don't deserve this. Well, what do they deserve? We were treating slavery as if it were a mystery buried in the past, something to investigate if we chose to. Now that history has a monetary value. Confession is not absolution. And mm. in the case of this person, what's her name? Shaniqua. Shaniqua Johnson. To Shaniqua. Slavery is not past. That's right. It is right. not a mystery. It is not an historical curiosity. It is a cruel, unavoidable ghost that haunts in a way we can't see. He looks like the same dude that was in the boat in episode one. So now you're what? You're separated from your wife. She's taken your kid. Now she has to be raised without a father. She has to build wealth and success from the ground up. Similar to the position we put them in. That's right. We're gonna be okay. All of us. We were running from it. Now we're free. Just pay up. If you got it. If you got it. Do whatever you gotta do. Payment plan. Mortgage the house. Get rid of that Prius. My name Coda, where do you see me? I'm white. From. That's for sure. That's for sure. It's gonna be a lot of that. <sighs> a portion of their paycheck going to restitution taxes. Stay after. Everyone else? Restitution the floor. taxes. Taking it out of their check like child support. God dog. Uh, they really figured this episode out, didn't they? <clears throat> uh, name of payee? Uh, Shaniqua Johnson. And percentage? 15%. 15%? Ouch. Well, at least tips aren't garnished. Ah, there's that. Uh, Your 213 you hourly rate? Yeah, you're gonna get far with that. God. It's incredible. Shanique was going to be out there, watch. Or a dining room full of black people. Dressed up all elegant. Well, 
Look who's serving now. God, what and oh my goodness. Um, yo, that was the quickest episode I think I've ever watched of that show. I know they're all 30 minutes, but still, that flew. And uh, I I know y'all have already seen this, so I know you probably felt the exact same way I feel right now, so just give me a moment. The thing is, when that hit him so unexpectedly, in my heart, I wanted to defend him. Well, first of all, they showed him stealing. He was aware he did it. And if I had accidentally slipped some cookies into my pocket, I wouldn't have went back in and brought attention to myself and apologized. But still, he was just like, oop, and then he ate him, you know? I do not understand the significance of that. What That white people can just get away with anything? That nobody is looking at white people to do anything bad, you know? There was a black dude in front of him in line that was like on a phone call that he was kind of, his voice was a little raised. So maybe that was just a distraction. But some people are not being followed through the stores. Some people do not always have eyes on them and who knows what they do? Who knows what happens? Asking the question, should we pay for the sins of our fathers? Am I responsible for the sins of my fathers? Black people are killed. Black people are discriminated against. Black people don't get opportunities. Black people don't get the platforms that they need to speak their minds and to make positive change and to do the things that we deserve to do and have every right to do. Just as far back as slavery is, which is only a couple hundred years ago, which is not that long ago at all. Because of the color of our skin, we suffer every day for absolutely nothing. Because just like Marshall was saying in that hotel bar, or the other dude was saying to him, he was just like, they're gonna pull you out of your house, your wife's gonna live, be without a husband, your daughter's gonna be without a father. That's the same thing. Imagine the peace and tranquility of Africans when they were back in Africa. They saw that boat coming. Probably sounded like Pocahontas. Ooh, look at those clouds, funny clouds, whatever. If they had never seen a ship like that before. Who knows? They could have been fascinated by it. They could have been standing on the shore. And they got snatched up, thrown in chains, and starved, and put in the bottom of a ship. A lot of them didn't even survive to go to America. And that's where it started with the Africans. Mothers getting pulled away from their children, fathers getting pulled away from their children, them getting taken from their homes, not having a job anymore, not doing the things that we take for granted, but because we've always had it, we never think about it. We never think about it. They, who, I don't know. This episode has me so conflicted and not knowing how to feel. This episode put a new file in my head, like a new category of what is that really? What, what if? What if? And that is oppression. It's oppression. Me thinking that black people will never be properly apologized to, me thinking that Black people will never get what they deserve because of the brutality and the wrongdoings that were done to our ancestors. It's wild. And as I'm sitting here confused, what I'm thinking is, when it was, I was thinking about how it would fairly be dispersed. So for example, if that dude Marshall, say his family 
still had a very prosperous farm somewhere. Say his family had a very successful business, a Walmart, a Target, a Kraft, a Hershey, a General Mills, whatever it is, logically, would they get the entire company if they could confirm that it was completely built off of a product that slaves had produced? Would they get a percentage of the company? Would they get a free Sam's Club card and all you can eat hot dogs for the rest of their life? Like, what do you do? What could you do? Because there's a pain and there's a racism and there's a prejudice that money is not going to wipe away at all. But these white people that have started with a little something, these white people that's parents went to college and have a career and have a job, and I'm telling you, everybody knows a first generation college student that's African American. Everybody. Because our people have unfortunately not gotten the opportunities from the get, from day one, we were scratching and surviving. Depending on others, depending on whatever we could, doing whatever we could to keep your head above water. And people don't understand that either. White people don't understand that no, they're not rich, but their parents have a car, their parents own a house, their parents went to college, their parents have good credit, their parents have money in their bank accounts, their parents lived in better places, better neighborhoods, better towns, got to go to better elementary schools, got to get the attention and the tutoring and the help that they deserved, opportunities to go to college. How? I understand now in 2022 that it's different, but a lot of students that are black, and I'm being real, I'm being real, are places in the arena, unfortunately. I thank God that academic African Americans are coming up and rising and changing the world, but nine times out of 10, white boy's gonna be a doctor and black boy's gonna be in the NBA dancing and bouncing a ball and performing for people with the strength that we had in the field. You keep us in the arena, you stay in the office, everything has to change. You gotta blow it all up and build it back over. That's... I cannot, being black, I cannot fathom what my ancestors went through as slaves. I can't fathom it. But I feel the eyes and I feel the pain and I feel the judgment and I feel the fear. If something like that was to happen and the government was behind it 100%, are those big rich Ivy League people gonna have to pay up too? I'm sure it's not a problem for them, but how are they enforcing it when they owe money too? Like, who are y'all answering to? Who are y'all answering to? Would it be like, okay, we're cool now? Y'all aren't gonna be prejudiced anymore? You're not gonna be racist anymore? Or would a shift in the finance of the world change it? 